How's everybody doing? John Lucas. I'm coming at you guys for the third month, month number three review. This review is 3D Foundations. Everything that you wanted to do up until now, this is where it's going to start. And I love this class and the basic structure of this class is to understand that there is a pipeline with everything in animation that you want to do. Even with games, there is a pipeline. And this is how the pipeline starts. Really good idea. Let me uh, let me jot this down. Ah, so this is my script, and this is the storyboard of what I want to do. So let me get this all over to the artist. Oh, here we go. How y'all doing? My name's John Lucas. I am the character modeler for this pipeline, and I will be going you the projects three and four. Project three talked about working with props. You can choose from three different props, a hydrant, a gun, or a chair. And of these props that you choose, the class literally goes step by step within a video tutorial of how can you extrude, how can you input vertices. And just to let you guys know, these is a little ticker of one of the differences between gaming and computer animation. Gaming is allowed to get away with having tri having tri polygons. When I say tri polygons, I mean they can have triangles in a in a uh, model and get away with it because they're not trying to go for that much detail. For computer animation, though, you have to have a quadded shape. When I say a quadded shape, like a four vertice shape. And they do go over with you how can you clean up your polygons and how can you check once you're done extruding and intruding and bevel and all that other jazz. Once you're done with that, how to clean up. And if it's, something's messed up, you go, go back in there. And it's always good to save, save, save your stuff, people. And what I do, I'm the character modeler, like, like I said earlier. Everything that's in this storyboard right here, I'm going to bring it to life in the 3D atmosphere. Alright, this looks nice. Mm. Oh. I'm, you have to excuse me. I just love it when the character modeler throws stuff at me and then expects me to catch it. Thank you so much, John. Maybe next time you can buy me lunch, you jerk. Anyways, as far as Full Cell goes, projects 5 and 6 is a texturing project. And what it does is you go over uh, UV texturing, and when you have a uh, model like John gave me earlier, you have to map out, literally unravel the skin of a project. The best way I can explain this to you is take the world, and then you unwrap the very skin of of the earth. I know it kind of sounds pretty gore, pretty go pretty gothy. It's pretty nasty. But have you ever seen those pictures when you have the earth and it shows all the continents? That's exactly what we do. And what we do, we need to pinpoint each location just to make sure that your eyes are fooled into thinking that there's an image as the geometry. This is what we do. This is what I live for. After I John gives me the character in this creation of what John wanted to do in his storyboard. I am to rig the character. Um, the best way I can do thinking rig the character is putting the pretty little bones on him. I put the joints, um, I mess with the IK handles, the FK handles, and I put the hierarchy of bones. When you think of your body, what is the key center? What is when that bone moves, everything else moves regardless. No choice at all. That is your center, your center of gravity, your pelvis. And that is where everything starts out in. Move your hips. I'm moving my, the top of my body, the head of my body, and the bottom of my body. And that is what you do. Also, I mess, you also learn about parent and child. Parent and child is if my hand moves, then, then my fingers have to move too. Think of it like a parent at the, at the game store. You know the parents at the GameStop stores be like, all right, that's enough. Time to go. I'm tired of seeing all these stupid little games. You stupid little boy. And the kids are like, oh, I want to stay, I want to stay, I want to stay. They can move around. They can move around. But when the parent moves, everybody moves. And once you learn this concept, it will be simplified and better explained from me once you go into full cell and they teach you all that needs to be taught, you'll be doing just fine. 
set up your skeleton, and you can move him as you wish. And as far as the storyboard goes, I have that from John Lucas. Okay, he wants to jump off the hydrant, jump and hit the pole. <laughs> that John's kind of funny. But uh, I think we can get this done. I can set the bones up. Okay. Got that all done. Kind of nice. I'm going to toss this to you, okay? I'm going to toss this to you. Thank you, Texture Red Guy. Um, gotta love how pansy and how pathetic he is. Anyways, my name is John Lucas. I am the animator, and everything that has been given to me by the rigger over there, I can now animate my character into a sequence of how many frames per second to actually make our movie. This is when we really get into actually making the movie. All the setup is not completely done, but it's done enough for me to get to work. What I do is um, three basic laws of any 3D program, whether it be Maya, 3ds Max, you name it, this is how it goes down. First, what you need to do is set your keyframes. Keyframes is a regular frame of you can play it out as many times as you want. Say I have 60 frames. If I play it out each frame in rapid success succession, you're gonna it's going to look to you as if it's a movie. And you can really tell within this in the old 1920s movies, but, you know, over the years, you got to get better at it. You know, that's the editing guy. Ha! But I, other than that, after you set your key to the time and frame that you want, you have to animate your pose. Say I have a human body going like this. I set my keyframe to zero, and now I must set my keyframe to ten. So for keyframe ten... I mean, 0 to 10, I must move my hands like this. And so that's easy. Just animate both hands, both arms, get them just like that. And that is the second part of the third part. The third part is setting your pose and locking that pose for that frame. If you don't lock your pose for each frame, you're going to get really stuck. Um, I can't tell you how many times as a rookie that I would animate something, but I would set the keyframe and I would and, and I would change the pose. And then once I go to click on something else, it goes back to the initial pose I was already at. It drives a brother crazy. So after I animated that with the help of the rigger and the help of the props and all that jazz, I send it over to the lighter. So here you go, lighter. Coming at you fast. Soup. Boom! Touchdown, dog. You know what I'm saying? What's up, everybody? I'm John Lucas. I'm the light guy. I'm the guy that finishes everything in the 3D program before we set it all to Final Cut Pro, After Effects, Premiere, and all them other little movies. Giggity, giddy, guy, guy stuff. Now, what we learn here, boys and girls, is our lights. You can't have anything in the world without lights, baby. Moonlight, sunlight, stage light, and spotlight. All the lights, baby. That's how I gets down. So, we have three lights coming at you. Bam! Key light. The number one. The Macho Alpha Omega. Full power. Coming at the character from a distance. Above him. To let you know, I'm right here, baby. I'm right here. And so, he need a little help. He do need a little sidekick on the side. Batman needs his Robin. Well, bam, boy, wonder. I call this baby my field light. Field light ain't as strong as the big old key light, but it complements. It helps get the job done. Uh-oh, I got Robin. I got Batman. But who? Come on, ladies. I ain't gonna forget about y'all. Batgirl in the back. Bam! Backlight. Backlight makes sure that the character is not blending in with the environment, baby. I'm my own person, baby. You know how I do? You yeah. that. So, after lighting the scene, I make sure what textures can fit in and what can fit out. And due to our budget, sorry, texture guy. No texture? So anyway, now that I got the light set up, I got the color set up. I mess with everything. And it's more than just the glow three-point light setting. You got to learn your colors, baby. Learn to move. Learn to capture what the story boy want. Ain't that right, John? I feel you, dog. Me and you, we like this, man. Like this. Facebook buddy, you know what I'm saying? So that's how we get the job done. So now I got this all finished up. Look pretty nice. Hey, dog. Go, non player. <laughs> that lights guy. He's so crazy. How you guys doing? My name is John Lucas. And what I'm going to do for you guys today is let you know how to make your movie. I have the animation from the animator, I have the texture 
from the texture. Oh, he's got cut out. Oh, gotta love those budget cuts. Got the lighting from the other guy, John Lucas. It's buddy right here. And so what I do now is I take my movie. Well, actually, unfortunately, boys and girls, in my there is no such thing as rendering out a movie. You do have playback, but hey, that's not enough for this. What it does is it renders out image upon image upon image upon image. And what we'll do today is we take those images and take it into what you may have After Effects or Final Cut Pro. And what Final Cut Pro is a great program. It takes each of those frames and plays it out as a movie eh, as if it was a movie all by itself. I can add sound effects. I can say something in it. I can even add or cut things inside. If a video is too long, I can just snip, snip, snip it out. And if it's too short, I can just go to the animator guy and say, Hey, you need to do some more animating. But all in all, we all work as a team, and this is how we get the job done. I'm the finalizer guy. I'm the editor. If there's anything wrong, I'm going to go to those guys. I'm going to say, Hey, this isn't good enough. John deserves the best. And so they do it, and then they, they pick on me. Gave me a wedgie the other week. But other than that, we're a great set of guys, you know. And so I'm the final piece to the animation pop line. Now you may see the video and enjoy. Wow, that was a uh, that was a good movie. But it's understandable that it's only six seconds, and it's kind of ironic how long, you know, all your work can be bundled in when you're doing animating. One of the animating little jokes that, you know, I did all this work, and I only get six seconds. Like, boo-hoo. But also, you know, this is what 3DF class, this is what it does. It goes with you. Pipe, parts of the pipeline, piece by piece by piece, the animator, the lighter, the rigger, the character modeler. And in the long run, what it does is shows you exactly your weaknesses, your strengths. What do you want to do after full cell? That's the universal question. And uh, for a personal note, I really love the class, you know. When you always have a class that, you know, you question whether or not am I doing the right thing, and then you have those classes like, yeah, this this is what I'm meant to do. This is this is my calling. This is my destiny to do this that kind of thing, you know. Um, in closing, uh, Mr. Steve Gold, Stephen Gold, he was our instructor. He instructed the class perfectly, and he really, really sent out tons and tons of uh, helplines and all that jazz. You know, almost every day there was someone that could help you, or you can email him. Or you can put put your stuff back in concept share and all that. It was just a great class. All in all. You know, five out of five stars. Uh, next class, everybody, is Fundamentals of Art 2. It's going to be really exciting. It has probably intense as Fundamentals of Art 1. I have been told that this Fundamentals of Art 2 class will eat you up and chew you out alive. But uh, I'm kind of excited and scared at the same time. I'm ready to go. It's 10.58 right now. I'm going to go to bed, get ready for class tomorrow with my online. But I will see you guys next time. God bless.